The reason we need a GB News is because of Britain's awful groupthink media, which ensures that any number of issues are either not discussed at all, vaccine injuries, for example, or Julian Assange being shipped off by Priti Patel to die in an American prison, or they're discussed entirely dishonestly, the migrant tide on the southern shore, or those quote-unquote grooming gangs of quote, Asian men. Grooming gangs is a phrase designed to anesthetize your feelings about men who gang rape little girls, urinate on little girls, dangle girls off the balconies of blocks of flats, douse girls in petrol, and then dance around them with lit matches. Grooming, grooming. Is that really helpful, that word, or does it just make vivid things like gang rape all a bit blurry and soft focus? And as for quote, Asian men, let's swap the casting and imagine what would happen if Pakistani Muslim girls in Rotherham, Rochdale, Oldham, Oxford were being gang raped by white working class Englishmen. Do you think the media would be discreetly referring to them as European men? If you can't talk about a problem, honestly, you're unlikely to fix it, which is why young girls go on being raped by Asian men in towns up and down the land. Sammy Woodhouse was on this show last night, as she has been many times. Sammy's tormentor, Arshad Hussein, the man who ruined her life, was offered a deal by South Yorkshire police. Hey, just return that 14-year-old girl you've knocked up and we won't arrest you. And yet the political class and the media and big tech all seem to agree that we need to shrivel the bounds of public discourse even further. Even when these people are part of the story, there's apparently no story. Angela Rayner is one of the MPs for Oldham. When she crosses her legs in front of Boris Johnson, it's hold the front page for weeks on end. But when 12-year-old girls in her town, are being trafficked for gang rape inside Oldham Police Station itself. It's a big, fat nothing. Angela Rayner's Oldham. Nightmare on Ginger Growler Street, where the monster is inside the building, employed by Oldham Council. Poor little Sophie, raped by at least eight different men in one day, is already forgotten. The consequences of the group thing are most apparent on the biggest issue of the last two years. Nadine Doris's Orwellianly named online harms bill is bad enough as it is, but now all the usual suspects are determined to make it even worse by adding to it so-called health misinformation. This push to turn an already disgraceful bill into a full-fledged censorship law comes at the behest of self-proclaimed fact checkers such as Full Fact, an organization funded by American gazillionaires, many of them big tech types, who already exercise near total planet-wide control over access to information, but who'd like it to be even more totally total. No self-respecting Britain should surrender his French, his free speech rights uh, to an alien money bags like Full Fact, least of all in the area of health misinformation. What do they mean by that term? All those people who told us last year that these vaccines are 95% effective at preventing you from getting the COVID jab, jab, jab. That's not true. Justin Trudeau has been jabbed four times and he's just had his third bout of the COVID. Oh, but don't worry, he says, if he were unvaccinated, his COVID would be even worse. Uh, that's not actually true either. Quote, unquote, health misinformation is a particularly sharp example of what happens when you restrict free speech. Because in this area, when you restrict free speech, people die. Millions and millions of people around the world are now chronically sick and will never work again and have huge medical bills that will impoverish them for the rest of their lives because there was no honest conversation about the pros and cons of taking experimental drugs. There was no honest conversation about the ethics of pressuring people to take drugs, not for any medical reason, but in order to keep their jobs. And indeed, if you advanced any view on these so-called vaccines, contrary to the groupthink, the likes of Full Fact and their chums at Facebook, Google, Twitter, would label you instantly as misinformation. And as a result, thousands upon thousands of people have died. This week, something remarkable happened. Vicky Spitt, a regular on this show who lost the love of her life to the vaccine, 
was informed by the government that she would be the first person in the UK to be compensated because the vaccine had killed her loved one. Next up was Joe Ward, another guest on this show and another victim of the vaccine who lost his dad to the AstraZeneca and is now the second person who will receive compensation from the government. Joe spoke to me a week ago along with another vaccine victim who also lost her father, Kelly Hatfield. How, how can our cases be weak when you have a death certificate and we had 10 months of coroner's court and we've... I've read my dad's post-mortem. I've seen everything to do with my dad. How, how is that a weak case? What court can we go to when AstraZeneca have got legal indemnity to being prosecuted? Um, obviously, we're all going through the um, vaccine damage payment scheme. Um, obviously, my application has been in for over a year now, so no help is forthcoming there. Well, it took a while, but the help has belatedly come forth. Kelly contacted us today uh, to say that her mum is being offered the same compensation by HMG as Vicky and Joe for the loss of her father to the AstraZeneca vaccine. It's a miserable 120,000 quid. But even so, this week alone, the government has offered to pay over a third of a million pounds, just the three guests of the Mark Stein show, belonging to a category that hack twerps such as SMSP John Mason and the speech controllers of the internet deny even exists. Victims of the vaccines over half a million of them in the UK alone. So we have crossed a threshold. Her Majesty's government, which from Her Majesty down, told us to get the shot and it was perfectly safe, has now acknowledged for the first time that in fact these vaccines kill people. And yet even as the government recognises what it has done, the sick totalitarian freaks of social media continue to suppress all dissent.